Hello, I'm Dr. Francis Pitsilis. You thought botulinum toxin in the form of Botox, Dysport or Xeomin brands are for frown lines and crow's feet. However, there is new research that is suggesting it's very good for depression, anxiety and sleep and possibly a few other things. Now, botulinum toxin started its life as a treatment for muscular spasm around the eyes that we know most about. And then after that, uh, because the doctors could see that the wrinkles were going away, it became a cosmetic treatment. And then after that, because the patients were saying, well, my migraines have gone away since I've had this treatment, um, then it became a migraine treatment. So now, of course, there, are, there is more and more research about botulinum toxin. So currently, botulinum toxin has been in phase three clinical trials for depression. Frowning in and of itself may cause depression in some individuals. Our facial muscles embody our emotions, thereby helping to provide emotional uh, sense of where you are. Experimental psychologists have now confirmed the facial feedback hypothesis. That means that communication between the emotional centers of the brain and the facial muscles is bi-directional. It goes back and forth between them. Um, specifically, for example, the zygomaticus muscles that help you smile, that causes a happy mood. So if you smile, you get happier and it does work. Also, the corrugator muscles here that provide the frown are involved in a gloomy mood. And I have personally treated patients uh, when I haven't uh, had much other choice uh, with depression by treating their corrugator muscles and we've had good results. So what seems to happen is that the corrugator muscles connect to the emotional uh, nervous circuits within the brain and um, including areas within the limbic system, that's the primitive brain, the brain stem and the mood centres of the brain. Um, and so therefore negative emotions are concerned with the corrugator muscles. Now in depression they've been shown to be overactive and so if we relax these muscles that would signal to the brain that the world is a better place or a happier place or there's a more positive view because we're no, by, by not having the corrugator muscles uh, contracting, we're no longer stimulating those centres in the brain that are causing that depression. And what's interesting is that the researchers have found that it doesn't matter whether you have a frown line or not. It doesn't matter whether you have any creases there. The treatment of the frown lines still works. So what we've found is that there's a pathway going backwards from the nerves in the corrugator muscle to these areas in the brain and then from there they go to the back of the spine as well. Um, and we think that, that the, the, although the researchers are not certain, they are postulating, suggesting that the role of botulinum toxin, similarly to its role in pain, but its role in depression, anxiety and sleep even, um, is because of its effect on the sensory neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers in the brain that include substance P, calcitonin gene-related peptide and neurokinin A. Now as well as that, there are two little almond-shaped areas on each side, one, one on each side of the brain called the amygdala and that's where fear comes and they are affected as well. And all of this has been shown by doing brain imaging studies. Um, and they found that with the brain imaging studies that the effect of the botulinum toxin, when, when, when it wore off, the effect on the brain centres affected also wore off. So there's not only a functional correlation, meaning the person's reporting how they feel has changed, but they have found an imaging or an actual anatomical correlation with the action of the botulinum toxin. 
So what I also found interesting when I was researching this topic is that I found a recent USA patent application. And this patent application for botulinum toxin was suggesting that it not only helps sleep, mood and anxiety, but it, that it may have potential for neuropsychiatric disorders such as agitated behaviour associated with mental retardation, schizophrenia, Huntington's disease and Alzheimer's disease. So there may well be a very interesting future for alternative uses of botulinum toxin.